Hey guys, welcome to another home lab series video today. In today's video, we will be showing you how to uh, install Magni. I don't know if I said that said that right. Um, M A G E N I. Um, it's actually a um, self-hosted kind of open source vulnerability scanner. Um, so this is a nice kind of thing that you can use for when you're trying to determine, hey, are my servers actually vulnerable without needing to be like digging into like a million things. So you can just scan it and see if they have any vulnerabilities in the packages that you would need to update. So the one thing I will note is this video is for educational purposes only. So if you're not authorized to scan something, do not scan it. Please, to dear God, do not scan it. Um, but on your own stuff, that is totally fine as long as you know what you're doing. So, but otherwise, if you're not entirely sure what you're doing, this is only for educational purposes only. So, all right. This video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my videos, uh, want to sponsor me or send me some free swagger hardware, my email is in the description below. So let's get started, guys. All right, so what we'll do is log into our server. Um, so give me one second here. Uh, drawing it at, let's see, 142 here. So the one thing that you'll need to know is the first thing is um, I am running Ubuntu 20.04. Um, the reason for this is it act, they, the script that it runs as, um, it really, really supports this one that I know of. Um, because it actually does do a check for like the version that you uh, are running. So like in here, OS requirements for this, it says both 18 and 20, but uh, I tried 18 and it just didn't work. So I, I think that's deprecated, that it just isn't supported anymore. So you have to do at least 20 if you're using the Ubuntu. Um, then there's some host requirements stuff. So for the most part, because you're probably only gonna scan your home lab test stuff, it's not that big of a deal to make it too big, but um, just to kind of show you right there. Um, but then you scroll a little bit farther down, you can see the installs. Honestly, you don't have to do the first two, you can just do the actual install here. So we'll actually kick off the install right here. Um, and so it'll just go through its checks, make sure everything's good, and then you essentially get to use it. Um, so it's a, they have a web interface that you essentially use, um, but it the solution was kind of pretty nice. It just gives you like what vulnerabilities you have when you scan against a host, and then you can essentially click on them and then see you know what's affected, how what's the solution to um, fix it, and it's great. So. Um, while that's installed, we will set up DNS also. So yeah, here, right here is, it looks for what is supported. When, so when I did 1804, um, it actually said that that was not supported anymore. So, um, and I'm sure as, you know, depending on when you watch this video, it could be like 22 at that point and 20 is not supported anymore. So just make sure you check the page, see what it is and get the latest one essentially. So, but we will update DNS here real quick um, while we wait for that to install. So make sure you update the serial number here. And then Magni in A and save that. Boop, boop. All right, so that should update DNS and Still waiting for, oh, it's gonna update all my Ubuntu packages and everything, so this might take a few minutes here. Um, but we will fast forward this video to when it actually finishes. All right, so that took about five to seven minutes to actually install, but um, as you can see, everything installed, create a certificate and everything. So if you scroll up just a little bit, it will tell you what your credentials are for the web uh, GUI here. So we will not use the IP, we will actually use um, the DNS name that we set up. So Magni Dragon.local and it's HTTPS. Um, it does create a self signed cert itself. Um, so that's totally fine, no worries. Um, and then we will use the username for the email and the password here and we can sign in. So this is what it kind of looks like when you first kind of do the base install, um, but not too much to it. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. You got your account stuff um, and everything, nothing like too fancy. Um, but essentially now this is when you can start scanning and seeing, you know, what things are vulnerable in your, in your own home lab and the service that you've set up. Now, again, 
if you're not comfortable with what you're doing with this, and you're not entirely sure, this is for educational purposes only, if you're not authorized to scan the resource that you're scanning, also don't do that. <laughs> so, um, that is essentially my spiel here, because this is an important thing, because if you end up scanning something that is not yours, and you end up like you know taking a website down or taking something else down, you are there are a lot more legal things in regards to that situation that you don't want to be a part of, and you don't want anyone knocking on your door about. It. Um, so if you're not entirely sure what you're doing, don't do it. Um, but in this case, I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to do it. Um, so what you can do here is essentially set up a new scan. Um, Essentially, you set the name, you know, test scan. You can set up multiple scans that you want in here. Um, and here's kind of what they offer. So there's like a full fast, full fast and ultimate, full and deep, uh, full and very deep ultimate. And, you know, discovery is empty, host configuration, host discovery and system discovery. So there's a lot of uh, things that you can essentially try and use. Um, and so we can do like full and fast here, just to kind of show you what it can collect and whatnot. Um, so in here, access configured. Um, in this case, I played around with this and essentially I just put in the IP of the server that I want to scan. So in this case, if we look back at our DNS configuration, we can try to scan um, our GitLab here. Um, so GitLab is on 1.11. Um, so we'll set that in here. Um, if you were to do like host discovery, you can do a subnet range. So you can do like 172.116.1.0 slash 24, that also works. Um, but in this case, it just essentially wants you to put in the IP or possibly the host name. You can try host name too. Um, but that's what this is in here is. Um, and then you can do other configurations. I'm just going to leave everything as default here. We'll hit next. Um, you could do um, actual credentials. Um, where essentially you set the credentials in here for like username and password so that you can actually get even more information about the system because if you have access to the server, it can do more scanning within the server versus if you don't have credentials, it will just do like a blanket like scan from what it could see from the outside, like what ports are open, um, what it could do with those uh, ports and stuff like that. Um, but in this case, we won't configure credentials, but you could do that um, to get a more deep scan. Um, if you want to schedule scans, um, that looks like it's part of the enterprise edition and, and you can't use it in the community plan. So um, that's something to know. Same thing with email notification, doesn't work in the community plan, but no biggie, I'm just gonna do some simple scans and we will click create. So now it created the test scan, um, but you have to actually start it. So it, it doesn't actually start when you create it, it's just setting up a scan. Then you have to click start to start it and it will essentially run. And when it's done running, you can actually go to reports and go vulnerabilities, I believe. Um, and when it actually shows, it will actually have <laughs> scans. So it's requested, it should eventually run. Um, so we will also fast forward this video for when the scan actually finishes so I can show you um, what it actually outputs. Okay, it's still running for seven minutes, but we now starting to get results. And essentially when we click on it, we can see what is vulnerable, what the severity is, where it goes from, I believe like high, medium, critical. I think there's actually even one higher than high, um, that, which is critical and stuff like that, where you can essentially now see what we currently have on it um, in our GitLab and what we're vulnerable for it. So you can see how like we got some median stuff where it's, Hey, we should probably actually just update OpenSSH um, and make sure that, yeah, so like we have 8 other installed, we should install 8.8 .8 and stuff like that. So there's actually a lot of good information that just kind of like helps you go, oh, I need to install the new package, update, or patch essentially um, to kind of get rid of some of these vulnerabilities. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it though. I mean, you pretty much can run scans, see what you have vulnerable in, for your assets and just try to secure the best you can. So there you go, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.